Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about three different mapping tools that are powerful to examine the solar eclipse from April 2024 and other solar eclipses. First of all, this one from our story maps team here at ESRI is really quite compelling. You can see the path, you can see the duration, you can see the totality path, you can see the population in the path of totality, the distance it would take to reach the path of totality, for example, in a car, and much more. Maps are powerful ways of communicating, powerful teaching and learning tools, and this is no exception. What about cloud cover, potential cloud cover? We've made hexagons here, which is another technique that you could use in a mapping package like geographic information systems such as ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Online. You can actually create your own maps like this, and I have other videos, and so do my colleagues, about how to do exactly that. But just to consume these three different map sets is a powerful set of tools and resources that you have at your fingertips. The second one to explore is one from NASA. It's a story map collection from NASA. It starts with the birth of stars and how stars form and much more. Videos, compelling images, of course, from NASA, you would expect nothing less, and rich text. I look at some of these story maps as ebooks. They've got so much content in them that you could look at them as being really ebooks. So the first one was from the ESRI Story Maps team. I particularly like this part of the NASA Story Map because it talks about supergiants, white dwarfs, and the main sequence of stars, including our own. Where do we fit into the grand scheme of things? And last part of the NASA Story Map, I think, is really quite good, talking about sunspots, eclipses, how they form, lunar eclipses and solar eclipses, etc., with lots and lots of wonderful videos. So that is uh, two sets of maps, one from our ESRI Story Maps team and one from NASA. This third one's from me, my Exploring Solar Eclipses with GIS. That's part of the education blog that I regularly post to, and so do my colleagues. And I get into, how do you teach with these tools? So for example, I found a feature service with solar eclipses spanning hundreds and hundreds of years. If you look at that, it looks like spaghetti. Look at how many solar eclipses and the pathways. Wow. So this teaches GIS tools. It teaches about dealing with data. In this case, I've got a lot of solar eclipses there, right? I can scroll down to the transparency tool. Then I can scroll that transparency tool so I see land masses underneath all those solar eclipses. Now, what about this? What if we filtered some dates out? So we don't see all of the hundreds of years. We used to use the filter tool on the right side. And notice I'm not even signed into ArcGIS Online. The powerful thing is I don't have to be signed in to do this kind of thing. I'm going to filter on date. I'm going to say between, let's see, what do I want to do here? You have full power and full control here. I'm going to do between April 1 of 2015 because I want to see that 2017 eclipse. I'm going to go up to 413. April 13, 2024, so just after the current one that's this week, April 2024. Now I just see a few of these with the filtering on. You can see the one from 2017. You can also see the one from 2024. There's the 2024 path, and over here is the 2017 August path. I missed that when I was teaching in Australia, but I was blessed to be teaching in Australia, and it was wonderful. But I did miss that one. There's one from 2023, October. Fascinating to be able to filter to do the transparency and also of course you can change the symbology you've got a geographic information system at your fingertips folks you're not confined to the symbology that i chose or other chose others chose i can make the color yellow and i can make the outline a reddish color i can bump up the size of the outline so i can maybe pick out patterns and relationships a little bit better oh that's just wonderful and so easy to do so powerful and yet so easy to do running in a web browser no installation of any software required. You're using ArcGIS Online, which is a cloud-based GIS. Here's the resulting map. If you want to just look at my results rather than actually going through the filtering yourself, you're happy to do that. You're welcome to do that. I've got a few pop-ups there, as you can see, that describe the eclipses. Here's the questions to suppose. Describe the shape. Why do eclipse paths have the shape that they do? How are they predicted in the future? Which cities and regions? How far away will you need to travel to see the eclipse? Will it be total the entire length and width? And if so, why? And if not, why? Also, you have the capability of using a 3D scene, which I describe in other videos as well. 
Let's say a 3D scene would enhance your perspective, your understanding of the eclipse. So here I've got that same data that I filtered out for a couple of eclipses in a 3D scene. That's part of ArcGIS Online as well, a 3D scene. And I've just got these two with pop-ups, as you can see here. And now perhaps that helps me understand this a little bit better or in a deeper or a richer way. So that's my 3D scene. You can also set the weather settings. You can set the sun angle. So let's go ahead and go back into that 3D scene and set the time of day, the time of year, and look at sunrise, sunset, etc. You can see there it's relatively easy to do. All you have to do is click on the desired month and year. And I'm going to go up to April 2024. And I'm going to go to April 8. And then I'm going to roll this ball to see sunrise and sunset. Fascinating to be able to do this, to look at Earth-Sun relationships and look at patterns, relationships, and trends. And I'm not even uncovering other things you can do here. You can, you can add current weather. You can add biomes, ecoregions, population density, and much more. Sunrise and sunset times for each city along the path. Oh, there's so much you can do here. But I pose some questions, and you're welcome to use my questions. What additional questions could you pose with this data set and these tools? And what about this? What about time zones, shadow, locations of meteorite impacts, all kinds of other things you can study with GIS because you have a inquiry-based, problem-based tool at your fingertips with rich data and rich capabilities. Thanks for being with me exploring solar eclipses with GIS. I look forward to your comments.